Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about an e-commerce payment system. Earlier in the week, I uploaded a different video that goes into the details about how a payment system works. In this video, we're going to treat the payment system more like a black box and mainly talk about how the whole platform would work when you have both a buyer and a seller. A platform like this is very common in any marketplace application. For our example here, we're going to talk about Amazon or any other similar e-commerce platform. If you just want to learn about payment systems and how payment systems work, I would recommend watching the video I uploaded earlier in the week. I'm going to put a link of that video in the description below if you want to check it out. With that being said, let's get started by looking at the high level features that we're going to actually design in this in this video. So the first thing is we are going to talk about how does the buyer pay the money to your platform? How does this money end up to the seller? Because when the buyer is buying, even though they're buying the product on your platform, the money that they're paying should go to the seller. So we're going to see how you as the platform can facilitate the payment uh, to go through from the buyer all the way to the seller. Then we're also going to be talking about something called the double entry ledger system. This is a pretty common ledger where you will have one row for both the buyer and the seller each. So you have like, let's say the, the buyer pays you $20. In that ledger, we're going to credit, credit $20 from the buyer and then debit that $20 to the seller. So that at the end, when you add up all the all the rows in that ledger, you should end up with zero dollars. But yeah, we're going to talk about that in details. And finally, we're going to talk about some reconciliation methods. What that means is usually a lot of payment processing is done asynchronously and there are different kind of errors or failures that the payment system can run into. So it's pretty common practice to have some kind of a reconciliation methods which runs maybe once a week or maybe once every night, which kind of goes and finds all the different inconsistency and fixes them so that we don't end up charging people the wrong amount of money. So yeah, those are going to be the high level features. So now let's start with uh, the first one, which is going to be the pay inflow. So as I mentioned before, when you talk about payment systems, in a marketplace product such as Amazon, you have two distinctly different flow. One is gonna be the pay in flow and the other is gonna be the pay out flow. So let's start by talking about the pay in flow and see what that exactly means. So in a pay in flow, you have the buyer who goes on your website and buys something from the seller. Once the buyer hits the pay now button, it's going to go through our payment system and that money is going to end up in our product's bank account. So let's say if we have Amazon, the buyer, when they pay the money, at first the money is ending up in this Amazon bank account. It is not directly going to the seller. So when the buyer, pay, uh, when the, when the buyer buys something on the platform, this money is going to the platform's bank account. In this case, that is Amazon's bank account. That's what we call the pay inflow. Now for the pay outflow, this is when we take that money and give it to the seller, right? So let's say some system tells our platform, so it tells Amazon that, hey, this is a good time to take that money that the buyer paid you and give it to the seller, right? Usually a time of, for that would be when a product ships. So let's say the buyer buys something the money ends up in our account and then we get a notification from some other service that the product has uh, just been shipped by the seller. At that point, we know that the seller has done their job so we can initiate the payout flow where through some direct deposit system, we are going to pay that amount of money to the seller's bank account. So yeah, when the seller ships the product, we initiate the payment to the seller. Uh, the payment is usually just a direct deposit from Amazon or our bank account to the seller's bank account. This is called the payout flow. 
So you can see how the whole payment system is divided into two distinct flows. One is the pay inflow, where the buyer is paying you the money, you being the platform. And then you have the payout flow, where you, once you're confirmed that the seller has actually shipped the product, you go and uh, pay out that money to the seller. All right, so now that we know about the two distinct flows, let's talk about what exactly happens when someone buys something on your platform. So I'm gonna zoom in one more level, actually two more levels, there you go. So this is an end-to-end -end flow of what happens when someone buys something on your platform. I am gonna have all the notes that you see over here linked as a PDF in the description below. So don't worry about taking screenshots or anything. If you wanna store this to review in the future, either bookmark the video or just go ahead and download the PDF that I have linked in the description below. All right, so we're gonna start from the top over here. Uh, oops, there you go. Yeah, so we're gonna start from the top over here. So you can see that, let's say the user goes ahead and buys some product on your website and clicks the buy now button. The first thing that happens is the browser calls some of your backend API related to the payment system. Your payment system gets that request and then stores information related to that payment in some kind of a relational database. Right, so this can include things like which user bought what items from what seller for how much money, things like that. And also maybe the status of the payment because uh, you can start the payment, you can start the flow by setting the status of that purchase to like pending. And then when uh, PayPal or some other payment service provider has confirmed to you that the payment has gone through, you can go ahead and update the status. So uh, anyways, for step two, the, the job is gonna be for the payment system to store the payment information in this relational table. Once, they do, once it does that, it's gonna go ahead and actually initiate the payment with a third party payment provider. It can be PayPal, Stripe, or any other platform that's out there. Uh, but yeah, the payment system does not deal with all the details about charging someone's credit card, storing someone's credit card information and all those things. All it does is call some API on PayPal Send to actually initiate the payment. Uh, yeah, so once PayPal goes ahead and completes the payment, it can go ahead and redirect the user in step five over here. It can go ahead and redirect the user to whatever landing page that you tell PayPal to. And of course, before actually doing the redirection, PayPal is gonna take that money that the user just paid and deposit it in the platform's bank account. Once again, this money is not directly going to the, to the seller, it's ending up in your platform's bank account. Once that payment is successful on PayPal send, of course, it's gonna tell the payment system that this has been a successful transaction and then the payment system can go ahead and update the ledger with the information, uh, like the information that the ledger is gonna record right now is how much money did the, did the user pay your platform, okay? Uh, yeah, so there's a few inconsistencies in the diagram. So this is step five, so this is gonna be step six. I will try to update this before uh, putting the link of the PDF, but if not, just keep an eye out for that. So yeah, that's what happens when someone actually buys something through the payment system and PayPal. We are taking the user's money and putting it in our own bank account. In this flow, we are not actually sending the money to the seller. And we're also going and updating our ledger database. More on this later on. Okay, so the next step is gonna be, of course, now that you have the money in your bank account, how and when do you send this money to the seller? For that, I'm gonna zoom out one level so that you can see the full flow, there you go. Uh, yeah, so for that, of course, the first thing you need to know is when exactly to initiate the payout flow, right? So when exactly do you know that you have to move this money to the seller's bank account? And uh, it totally depends on what platform and what product you have. But typically in an e-commerce platform like Amazon, you must have noticed that your account 
uh, or the seller's account actually gets the money when the when the product has been shipped because this is when me as a platform i know that the seller has done done their part so usually it can be some kind of a webhooks on point registered with delivery companies like dhl ups or fedex or some other kind of system that you have built which informs you when a particular product has been shipped by a seller so whenever this notification comes in let's say this notification comes in to your fulfillment system now the fulfillment system knows that okay the seller has actually shipped the product let's go ahead and send this money to the seller right so the fulfillment system is going to call the payment system to actually initiate the payment to the seller the payment system through paypal or some other third party bank direct deposit uh, platform the payment system is going to send this money to the seller's bank account at the same time it's going to go ahead and update the ledger with this information let's say previously if we charged the if we charged the buyer ten dollars you had only one row in the table that says that buyer charged ten dollars now the payment system is going to update the ledger to add another row that says that that ten dollars has been debited into the seller's bank account so yeah this way you can make sure that when you add up all the rows in that ledger database you should sum up to zero all right so that's step three and step four and then step five is once the fulfillment system knows that the money has been deposited to the seller's bank account it can go ahead and send the notifications to both the buyer and the seller through some notification system so the 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 notification of the buyer can be something along the lines of your product has shipped and the notification to the seller can be something along the lines of hey the money has been deposited in your bank account okay uh, so yeah that's how the whole flow works both the buying part and also the selling part all right so now let's take a look at uh, the double entry ledger system so the purpose of the double entry ledger is you have a record every single time you are taking money from someone or you're giving money to someone right so in this example you can see that uh, this is going to be the other way around. So this is going to be uh, debit the user who bought and then credit the user who sold. So what happens is whenever there is some kind of a transaction, let's say that uh, a user buys $100 worth of stuff from a seller. You want to make sure that you debit the user who bought $100 and then you credit the seller who actually received the $100. So at the end of the day, when you add everything up, it should end up being zero. This is a good way to make sure that nothing in your system is broken or there is no way that you charged anyone too little or uh, at worst too much. The last thing we'll take a look at is the reconciliation or just some offline integrity check. Of course, in an ideal world, all the purchase flow and everything should be happening synchronously in real time. But in a world with many different payment methods and payment systems, it gets very difficult to ensure that in real time, everything is working correctly. So it's very common to run some kind of a nightly batch or maybe run some kind of a process every few days where you uh, go ahead and manually fix any inconsistency in your system. It's pretty common practice where payment firms like PayPal, Stripe, or maybe even any bank that you're integrated with, they send you a settlement file every night. This file is gonna include all the details about every single transactions that actually took place that day. You can take in this file every night and you can either do the processing every night too, or you can do the processing every few days. What the processing does is you go ahead and parse the file that you just got from this bank or payment system, and then you find any inconsistency that uh, you, you can actually infer comparing that settlement file and your ledger uh, database that you have, right? 
Once you find any inconsistency, you can go ahead and fix it automatically if it's simple enough. So you can do some uh, calculations to make sure if you charged anyone too much or if you charged anyone too little and take appropriate actions automatically if it's simple. In, in the case where the inconsistency is more complex and programmatically you can't really figure out what how to fix it, you can go ahead and create maybe a Jira ticket or somehow pass this information about the inconsistency to either the engineering team or the finance team so that they can take a look at the particular case and fix it manually. So ideally this reconciliation or offline integrity check should be done in an automated way where you just do the math and charge people more, like charge people the money that you did not charge them or just like get some refunds going on. Just have a system in place to handle all these automatically. If you can't do these automatically at all, only then do you uh, pass information to an engineering or finance team to do the more manual process. So yeah, I think we covered everything that I wanted to. So we talked about pay inflow and what that is and the payout flow. We talked about what happens when someone actually buys something and how the money ends up in your bank account. We also talked about how when the seller actually ships the product, how do you go about sending the money from your bank account or the platform's bank account to the seller's bank account. We also took a quick uh, quick look at double entry ledger, which is a pretty common ledger system used in products that are that have both a buyer and a seller. The idea is you have two rows of data every time something gets sold, one for the buyer, one for the seller. And at the end of the day, everything should sum up to zero. And finally, we took a look at any kind of reconciliation or offline integrity check at the end of the day or every couple of days to make sure no one got charged an appropriate amount of money. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. If you are interested in how the payment system works overall, because in this one we treated it as a black box, I would recommend checking out the video I uploaded earlier in the week. I am going to put a link to that video in the description below for you to take a look at. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.